Hey guys, Claire here, and in today's video, we're going to talk about all things Harry and Meghan. Prince Harry and Duchess Meghan's three-day trip to Vancouver for Invictus Games has officially concluded. Let's talk about it. Prince Harry did a one-on-one -on -one interview with Good Morning America, and I don't know about you guys, but I really enjoyed that segment. I loved Prince Harry's responses. I felt like it was open and honest, but still he answered the questions, but in a way that doesn't betray too much information about Charles, too much information about Prince Archie and Princess Lilibet's private life. I really enjoyed it. In moments, the Duke of Sussex will be hurtling headfirst 60 miles an hour down a winding track of ice in the mountains of Canada. Foot down. It's all part of his and Duchess Meghan's multi-day tour of the site of Invictus Games Vancouver Whistler 2025. The couple giving GMA exclusive access. Harry's the founding patron of the games, and for next year's first ever winter edition, competitors, many of them wounded veterans from up to 25 nations, will participate in about a dozen events. Since leaving the royal family nearly four years ago, the Duke and Duchess's every move has made headlines. And just last week, an unexpected diagnosis for Harry's father, King Charles. How did you get the news that the king was ill? Um, I spoke to him. And what did you do next? I jumped on a plane and, and went to go and see him as soon as I could. How was that visit for you emotionally? Um, look, I, 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 love, I love my family. The fact, that I was, the fact that I was able to get on a plane and go and see him and spend any time with him, I'm grateful for that. What's sort of your outlook on, on his health? That stays between me and him. An illness in the family can have a galvanizing or sort of reunifying effect for a family. Absolutely. Is that possible in this case? Yeah, I'm sure. I mean, you know, I've, uh, throughout all these families, I see it on a on a day to day basis. Um, you know, the, again, the the strength of the, of the family unit coming together. Just physically being in California, how have you processed the fact that there's so much happening back uh, with your family, where you come from? I have my own family, right? right? So as we all do, yeah. right? So um, you know, my family and my life in California is, is is as it is. You know, I will. I've got you know other trips planned um, that would take me through the UK or back to the UK. Um, so you know, I'll, I'll stop in and, and see my family as much as I can. That's my next question about your family. How's Harry the dad? How's what? How How's the Harry the dad? I can't tell you. That's classified. Okay, you it's know, super you know, top secret. It's top secret. Really? No, the kids. Making lunches. The kids, and... the kids are doing great. The kids are growing up like all kids do, very very fast. Um, they both got an incredible sense of humour and. You know, make us laugh and keep us grounded every single day like most, most kids do. So, um, yeah, I'm just very grateful to be a dad. How are you enjoying your time living in the U.S.? It's amazing. I love every single day. Back on the skeleton track, Harry making it safely to the bottom, hitting a top speed of 99 kilometers or 61 miles per hour. Oh, man. Yeah, that was really awesome. Good. Well done. Where do you get the desire to be so involved in helping other people. I've always had a life of service, and then I get my fix being part of the, with, with these guys. Um, there's no version of me coming here, watching them and not getting involved myself. Watching Harry here, that certainly rings true. His whole time on the mountain, he was engaging in all the activities and talking to the competitors, really immersing himself in all this. While the cameras here are focused on the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, make no mistake, they're not the ones taking center stage. These guys are the stars of the show. And as they step on the mountain in Whistler, Canada to meet staff, instructors, and future competitors for the 2025 Invictus Games. Hi, nice to see you. Nice to meet you. There's a noticeable glint in Harry's eye. When you have these moments of connection as you're going around meeting folks, what's it doing for them and what's it doing for you? It's my fix. Um, once, you, once you leave the, the military from a uniform standpoint, you never leave the community. And to have the games every, every other year, but then also be able to do a one year to go event as well, is literally my, my annual fix to be in amongst this community and have a laugh, have fun. No matter which nation they're from, the, the banter's the same. I get a lot of energy just from being around these guys. Harry giving GMA an exclusive preview of the first ever winter Invictus Games. A year from now, more than 500 wounded service members from all over the globe will be in Whistler and Vancouver, competing in events including alpine skiing and the high-speed skeleton. 
There was a permeating sense of gratitude on the mountain this whole week, especially from the competitors who get to participate in this event that brings them such meaning and purpose, and gratitude from Harry to get out and be among the people he has such fellowship and history with, and to go do the work that means so much to him and to his legacy, guys. The Invictus Games are just so incredible. Thank you so much, Will, for bringing that to us. And I did not know that the interviewer was the son of Christopher Reeve, AKA the original Superman. I saw Prince Dre did a TikTok on it. And after the fact, I was like, okay, I do see the resemblance. Did you guys know that? Also, can we take a moment to recognize the fact that Prince Harry let it be known in that interview that he has his own family, AKA Meghan and the children. I feel like for years now, we have seen the UK tabloids, royal fans on social media, and even people of that family and firm who seem to be under the belief system that Harry's entire existence should be being the scapegoat of that family, being the wingman of William, completely ignoring the fact that he is his own individual self, that he is now a husband and father. And it's interesting the way they report on William and his family as a unit, but they never seem to do that for Harry. The conversations always seem to surround this idea that Megan is an interloper, that the children are othered. Harry's place is with his father, his brother, and Kate. Not even Camilla. <laughs> Not Camilla. But those three. So I love the fact that Harry was very clear about that. I have my own family. Good for him. And I know Meghan did a little internal prayer when Prince Harry decided to go head first down that skeleton sled track. Those speeds are crazy and you're not wearing any protective gear with the exception of the helmet. But Harry, ever the daredevil, decided to do that not once, but twice. And those speeds were crazy. I saw somewhere on Twitter, someone posted a, a photo of Prince Harry doing the skeleton sled track and Prince William doing <laughs> one of his engagements. <laughs> you guys are petty, okay? <laughs> this guys, this is a masterclass in media management. Look at Prince Harry, he's like some modern day James Bond. He's leading the Invictus Games, he's speaking with disabled veterans, looking at their equipment, he's testing it out for themselves. And then after that, he puts his own life in jeopardy to toboggan down a run at over 60 miles an hour. Kensington Palace must be doing their nut at this stuff. It is literally a textbook lesson into how to get the media and the world's public on your side. He's showing his human, he's showing his daring, he's showing he can do good. He's with his gorgeous looking wife, bringing hope to tens of thousands of families that have disabled veterans in them and their support network. What's coming out of Kensington Palace on the other side? What are the other lot in the UK doing? Giving out MBEs and OBEs, good, if you don't drop stuff all over the floor and look as pale as a sheet and like you've had a few drinks before you started the ceremony. What else? Walking to church. Wow. Well done, Meghan and Harry. Prince Harry and Meghan Markle have spent the last few days in Vancouver and Whistler, where they are celebrating one year to go until the 2025 Invictus Games. And I'm sure you can imagine, or you've seen, how this has just triggered the British media. To the point where now the US media is openly making fun of them. While on this trip, not only did Prince Harry have the audacity to not look miserable, he also gave an interview to Good Morning America, in which he spoke publicly about his father King Charles' cancer diagnosis for the first time. He said when asked about his visit to London, look, I love my family, the fact I was able to get on that plane and go and see him and spend any time with him, I'm grateful for that. Pretty, pretty neutral, right? Not if you read, I'm so sorry, not if you read the tabloids, this is 
the US outlet The Daily Beast, who has somehow managed to spin that into Harry's sickening abuse of dad's cancer. You cannot make this shit up. In this article, which I'm guessing was written before the interview even aired, friends of Charles and Camilla are quoted as saying that Harry has taken it upon himself to use the diagnosis to publicize his own agenda. Another said it's hard to believe that Harry can keep finding ways to make things worse. He just needs to pipe down. I'm so willing to bet that these quotes were acquired before the interview actually aired. Because yeah, he said literally nothing controversial. He offered no inside information and said nice things about his family. And the royals are still mad. This interview, by the way, was with Good Morning America presenter Will Reeve, who is the son of Superman actor Christopher Reeve, famously suffered a spinal injury and was left paralyzed. So I think this man knows a thing or two about having a sick parent. He asked Harry, is it possible that this illness is going to have a reunifying effect on your family? And said, yeah, absolutely, I'm sure it will. He then pivoted back to the whole reason that he is in Canada right now, the Invictus Games. And he said, throughout all these families, the Invictus families, I see on a day-to-day -day basis, again, the strength of the family unit coming together. He's not trying to clout chase. He's not just self-serving here. He's trying to pivot back to his charitable cause. Because Harry and Meghan are indeed in Vancouver and Whistler to celebrate one year to go until the Invictus Games first ever winter sports next year. I'm really excited for this. Invictus actually comes from the Latin word meaning unconquered and that is a bit of a personal motto for Harry and Meghan these days as well as the motto for Invictus. Article after article has been written about them this week. All of it is complete bullshit ever since they launched their new website, which literally just provides news updates to the public, there's been so much said about the fact that they are now using Sussex as their like brand. It is literally their title. It's it's literally their last name. I cannot stress that to you enough. It's a fact that Sussex is Harry and Meghan's last name. But there's also been this weird concocted story about Archie and Lilibet using it as a last name. And for some reason, that's a bad thing. Even though Prince William used Wales as a last name because his father was the Prince of Wales growing up. You can see it right here on his RAF uniform. No, you're saying, but the problem's the children. Will and Kate's children also used first Cambridge and now Wales as a last name. But once again, it's only a problem when Harry does it. And I understand that that's the issue here. Just wish you guys were better at this game because this was a weird point to try and make. Uh, let's see, what else were they mad about? Was it the fact that Meghan looked so good in these gloves? Or the fact that Michael Buble accompanied them to the curling arena today? Oh no, we're still on the website. Richard Eden, who, oh my God, you guys, I'm having fun. Richard Eden writes that Harry and Meghan's shameless new website only serves to undermine King Charles. They are determined to become a rival royal family. I don't think the website is what's going to undermine Charles, although that's pretty sad for the royal family if that's true. I think if anything is going to undermine the royal family and set Harry and Meghan up to succeed, it is the fact that they are able to successfully foster ties with different cultures, which the royal family still has a lot of problems doing. Charles and William are ready to fumble being head of the Commonwealth. Meanwhile, Harry and Meghan and on this trip met with First Nations representatives whose land the Invictus Games will be held on next year. They specifically met with representatives of the Lil Wat Nation, including Chief Dan Nelson, as well as youth representatives and the artists who created the emblem for the 2025 Invictus Games. This logo was designed by members of all four First Nations in this area. And apparently this is the first time that such a collaboration has ever happened. Like, listen, Harry and Meghan are not bound by the requirement to remain politically neutral that the royal family is because when they met with these First Nations representatives, Harry made a point to ask how things were going. Chief Nelson said that positive steps towards truth and reconciliation were the whole reason that Harry wanted to meet with him. He asked what issues these First Nations individuals are still facing. And Harry and Meghan, since they're now philanthropists and not members of the royal family representing the institution, they're able to take things further and take actionable steps to address these issues wherever possible. But I love to see how at peace and genuinely happy Prince Harry seems to be whenever he's doing the activities surrounding the Invictus Games. There is a true sense of warmth and passion and camaraderie with these different vets. Even vets where they don't share the same language, but you can feel the love. And that's one of the things I love the most about the Invictus Games. With the new CEO for the Vancouver Games, I'm wondering if we might not see it on a huge network. Here's hoping. I've already seen articles talking about Megan's coat from day one already being sold out. So yeah, the Megan effect is real. Since Meghan Markle is a true fashionista, she is easily the best dressed person in the British royal family and I will not be debating that today or any other day.
Y'all are not blind. Y'all see it. Prince Harry and Princess Meghan just wrapped a three-day visit to Whistler, Canada. They were there to celebrate the one year to go for the 2025 Invictus Games. As per usual, Meghan took the moment to teach the world a thing or two about functional glamour. She started the week off with this cozy monochromatic look. She somehow was able to look chic despite probably being freezing cold. The coat is a Calvin Klein quilted maxi puffer jacket, which she wore over a classic cashmere crew neck sweater from the LA-based brand Co. Also paired that with some white jeans. I think these are from Le Linge. We've seen her in these before. I do believe she wore these to last year's Invictus Games. Her super cute furry snow boots are from the brand Sorel. They are the Joan of Arctic style boots. And her beanie is from Burberry in their fur pom-pom wool cashmere beanie. And she also wore black sunglasses this day from the brand Blender. For day two, she really flexed her styling prowess when she did this black and navy blue combo. I know a lot of us have seen people try to do the black and navy blue combo and it really just never works. It ends up just looking like you got dressed in the dark and thought they were the same color. Her puffer coat is from Hermes. Her cashmere beanie and scarf are from Aritzia. They're not shown in this picture, but um, she is wearing brown leather boots from the Canadian brand Comic, maybe Kamik. I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong. I've actually never heard of that brand. So as usual, Megan is putting me on. She was also wearing her black sunnies from Blenders again this day, but unfortunately her super stylish leather navy gloves are still unidentified. So I'm not sure what brand they're from, but they look amazing. On the third and final day of the couple's visit to Canada, Megan really said drip or drown and put her foot firmly on our necks. I mean, can we get a little commotion for the cape? Mrs. Sussex plays no games when it comes to couture, okay? This incredible, gorgeous cape coat is from Sin Taylor. These black skinny jeans are from Le Linge. I hope I'm saying that correctly. Um, once again, these are the black version of the white pants that I believe she wore on day one and also that she wore to last year's Invictus Games. Her super elegant brown gloves are from Max Mara. Stunning black boots are also from the brand Co. If you remember, she wore a sweater from the brand Co. on day one. She accessorized this look with a clutch from the brand Sesta and her earrings are signature link double cross earrings from Anine Bing. She also wore these earrings on the first day too. While I am admittedly a fan of pretty much everything Prince Harry and Princess Meghan do, when they do pop out, I'm always most excited to see what causes they're supporting and highlighting and also what Princess Meghan is wearing. Watching the budding bromance between Prince Harry and singer Michael Bublé was just not something that I expected but I am here for it. Those two seem to be having such a blast, laughing and having a good old time. And in some of the photos, you can kind of see Megan and Michael's wife in the background chatting it up, what they were talking about. I would love to know, spill the tea. But for those of you who used to read the take, then you would know that Megan and Michael had already met years prior through Megan's friend, Jessica. So, the fact that Megan and Michael and Harry and Michael's wife, I don't want to butcher her name, apparently went for dinner the night prior at a very popular Indian restaurant. It's really nice. I, I like seeing Harry and Meghan in their element and just carrying on with their lives. 2024 seems to be the onwards and upwards era and I like it. They were working off their dinner from the night before. The couple had a surprise double date at a Vancouver restaurant. The Duke and Duchess dined at Vidge's with Michael Buble and his wife, Luisana Lopilato. They came in from the kitchen, fr walking through the dishwasher, and the dishwasher was going on, and, and both of them walked through the back kitchen. They saw the whole spices and, and all the women in the kitchen that are cooking, and it was just incredible. And my kitchen staff was like so happy, and they were so excited. Vikram Vidge tells us the prince had a little trouble with the spice. He actually himself said, do you know I'm a ginger, which means I like, when I eat spicy food, I get like red and I could see it. Michael was loving it, Lou was loving it, Megan was just like, and she actually wanted hotter. So I had to go and get some green chilies and like our pickles to give it to her. Before leaving, Harry went to the kitchen to say hello to the staff. Okay, y'all, we have an absolute gem of an article. So Judith Woods wrote this article, and I mean, she had a complete meltdown about Harry and Megan holding hands. Like a complete meltdown. And I, I just want to share with y'all because... I was so entertained. Right, that's it. Does anyone have a pair of bolt cutters or maybe a water cannon? Because frankly, I think that's the only way we can stop Harry and Meghan from holding hands. <laughs> bolt cutters, water cannon, 
Like, why so violent? Why so violent about a couple that you do not know holding hands? A couple that you actually don't have to watch because they live on a completely different continent. That you actually have to go looking for Megan and Harry to have these strong feelings. But, okay. The whole young and so very much in love, not like Frosty and uptight William and Kate. Spoiler alert. Harry and Meghan don't live their lives based off of what William and Kate do and do not do. They are not the center of their world. But now that you've brought up Frosty and uptight William and Kate, I mean, we could talk about the fact that William acts as though he cannot stand his own wife in public and how often they rebuke each other's touch in public on camera. But you don't actually really want to talk about that, do you? No, you're just upset because it makes them look bad, which is not their problem. So Harry and Meghan, they have two offspring, age four and two. No one has free hands at that age and stage. I mean, (laughs) I mean. Okay, so let's play a game, okay? Who is missing (laughs) from this picture? Who do you not see? That's right, Archie, Archie and Lily. So (laughs) why would they be holding them? Because they're, they're not there. But when we do see pictures of Archie and Lily, which isn't often, you know what they're doing? (laughs) Holding them. Every time I see those two hold hands, it triggers me. It's inauthentic. It's unbelievable. It makes me want to scream because it bears no resemblance to the realities of parenthood. Now, again, this woman is bitter. She's so bitter. She's super bitter. First and foremost, why... Would a stranger holding hands with another stranger trigger you and make you want to scream? Like, it's not like Harry and Meghan are in public and they're just, like, going at each other. Like, they're holding hands. And it triggers this person. Also, it bears no resemblance to the realities of parenthood. Their reality of parenthood does not look like anybody else's. They have access to resources and help that most people can only dream about. So, no. The things that they do is not going to look like the things that the average person does. But you know who they don't have a problem whose reality of parenthood doesn't look like their own? William and Kate. And this is this is one of my my favorite paragraphs. We know Megan is whispered a hugger, as well as being one of the most influential women in the world, according to the couple's new website, which means it must be true. (laughs) Are you okay? (laughs) Are you okay? Ma'am, you are so bitter. You're so bitter. Seek therapy seat therapy doesn't she grasp that clinging on to her husband's arm all the time isn't feminist uh this woman doesn't know what a feminist is and it's it's quite scary at her big age quite the opposite it projects a bizarre image of childishness and codependence i mean it really doesn't (laughs) holding hands with your significant other isn't childish or code i can't you know what let me stop he even goes on to complain about Harry and how he touches himself, which sounds inappropriate, but it's not. While we're on the subject, he, as in Harry, has added a troubling new move to his repertoire. He has a tendency to place his hand over his solar plexus. It's an unconscious habit and presumably stems from the desire to shield himself from the media's enemy fire. Crikey. Now, again, we have a man who's spoken multiple times about his trauma with the media. So what we are seeing him do is self-soothe in public and this woman is mocking him for it. That's right on brand with the quality of people that the UK media employs. It's not the gesture per se that irks, rather the context. Whenever I walk down the street holding hands with my husband, I like to think of it as a signal to the neighbors that there will be no shouting or door slamming because we are quite evidently loved up today at any rate. So now we have this woman projecting her own troubles of her own relationship on Harry and Meghan. And the fact that she doesn't realize what she herself just revealed by the fact that there's a lot of shouting and door slamming in her own home, which she probably, again, maybe needs to go see a marriage counselor. Notice that she is performative with her own husband. She's not holding her husband's hand because she loves him and has great affection for him. No, instead, what she's doing is trying to signal to the neighbors, no, 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 we're okay. We're holding hands. <laughs> listen, listen. And I think this is, this, is, this is the heart of the issue, right? Because what we've been seeing with Harry and Meghan is the UK media doing everything in their power to break this couple, to disrespect this couple, to 
apply so much pressure that it would shatter their relationship. So whenever they see Megan and Harry holding hands, what it signals is it's not working. That they still love each other, that they still like each other, that they still cherish each other, and they cannot stand that. These people have spent eight years, eight years, throwing everything they could at these people, and they have failed. And they don't know what to do with that. And this is why we have this absolutely unhinged, bitter, and hateful article. How dare your relationship stand up against the violence of the UK media, the abuse, the hatred, the vitriol, and you can still smile. You can still hold hands. What will it take for us to break you? And I think the answer is nothing. Because here's, 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 the, here's the best part about this. The longer Harry stays gone, the less likely he's ever going to come back. They know that they are running out of time. And this is their reaction to it. I really don't want this to become a Meghan and Harry stand page because it's not. But it was Valentine's Day yesterday and I just posted about the other content creator saying how wonderful she looked. Then I saw this picture. So lovely. I mean, look at the love language, the way he's holding her. He doesn't have to do that. It's not something you fake. It's not something, oh my God, everyone's saying they're, they're going through a divorce. They're, they're, Harry's not happy. Harry wouldn't put his hand on her the way he is here. It's so lovely. I'm all loved up now, now because obviously I had my anniversary yesterday. So I love love and this is really beautiful. <laughs> just, just appreciate this, look. They're a happy couple. I don't know them, but they were just a happy couple. That should be celebrated too, right? Hi, Right Wing Media. I'm just curious why you're focusing so much on Prince Harry. He does an interview where he's promoting the Evictus Games. The reporter says to him, would you consider being an American citizen? Not an unreasonable question. He's married to an American. He lives in America. He says yes, but quickly turns around and says, I'm not thinking about that right now. I'm here for the games. It's like quite clearly. They then ask him about his dad. He rightly says, you know, illness can bring a family back together. And then he spins it back to the Invictus game and say, look at these guys here. So the whole thing, he kept trying to spin it back to what he was trying to promote. Meanwhile, over here is reporting like he's gone out of his way to give a debrief on what's going on with his dad, which none of us know about. And actually none of our businesses. And that he's trying to be an American citizen, coupled with anonymous sources, which always means you're lying. Anonymous sources saying he wants to come back and help out the royals. There's zero proof of that, but yet you're debating it. And I wonder why. I mean, is it because the Tories are just doing so appallingly bad you want us to take the heat off them and focus on something else? Or is it just that Prince Harry seems to be winning a lot of his cases where he's claiming that newspapers have, have hacked his privacy but are also making up lies about him? Which is ironic, because if that's the one that you're trying to do, you're doing more of it, all right, as you were. First of all, Boeing um, is a huge sponsor and uh, believer in Invictus and the Invictus Games. One of them obviously is the Invictus Games. But here we are in Vancouver, getting ready a year from now for Invictus uh, Vancouver Whistler uh, in 2025. And this is you know, what we're excited about right now is Invictus Games 2025. Well, you know, uh, in, in, in Invictus Games or the Invictus Movement is, uh, well, I, I call it, we've, we've been able to establish irreversible momentum. And a lot of that has to do with individuals such as the Duke and the Duchess of Sussex, Prince Harry and Meghan. And, the, you know, Harry is our, our patron. And with that type of dedication and commitment, the Invictus movement is just going to continue to flourish. So, of course, having Harry as our patron is uh, of, of, of significance. But I have to say, having sponsors like Atco and, of course, Boeing, um, you know, that, that's where all this irreversible momentum comes from. So Invictus is going to continue for many, many, I'll say years, but decades to come. So much happening back uh, with your family where you come from. I have my own family. Y'all heard Daddy Sussex? Daddy Sussex said he has his own family. The family that he has with Megan and their children are his. And they are what? Top priority. Okay? And the thing that I love the most about this interview is Daddy Sussex gave y'all little to nothing. When it came to him talking about Prince Archie and Princess Lilibet, notice the emphasis on the prince and princess right there since y'all like to come in my comments and say they're not princes and princesses 
mm, that's another topic for another day. But I love the fact that he gave you so little in regards to his children. Because what do y'all like to do? Y'all like to take anything he says or does or even shows his children, twist it into the most disgusting things to say. So I get, I love the fact that he gave you little to nothing when it came to his children. And when he talked about his father, I love the fact that he gave you nothing about their conversation and nothing pertaining to their health. Because what do y'all like to do? Take everything he or Mother Sussex says, twist it into some sick crap, spin it into your Delulu theories, and run with it. And then you believe it. But yeah, we're crazy. You, you know what? That's a mm, y'all y'all like to take me off into a little tangent. But anyway, I love the fact that Daddy Sussex gave y'all nothing. But even in the sense of giving y'all nothing, you're literally going to still take this interview, turn it every which way but the right way, run with with run with it in the most delulu way. Y'all don't be taking y'all medication. Have a good day. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, hit that notification bell.